I've been getting a lot of questions about whether or not this vaccination represents the mark of the beast or not. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the evidence and give you my, my personal opinion about whether or not this is the mark of the beast or not, or whether or not it's simply a baby step towards a system that will ultimately pave the way towards the mark of the beast. Now, in my opinion, I believe this is not the full-fledged mark of the beast quite yet. But I do believe it is a significant baby step towards it. And we're going to go over the scripture and I'll show you why I believe that. So in my opinion, if you take this vaccine, I personally do not believe that you're going to be condemned to hell for eternity. Now, for those that are not familiar, that is the pretty much the mainline belief that if you take the mark of the beast, it is actually impossible to go to heaven. And there are spiritual reasons that are complex for that. And people may ask, well, what if they're a believer and they take it? Well, the Christian view, one that I hold to personally, is that it's actually impossible. It will be, when, that, when this actually comes to be and comes to pass, it will actually be impossible to take the mark of the beast if you're a true believer. And that may be hard to understand, but I think one day, perhaps even in our lifetimes, we will understand so let's go through the evidence. Here she is receiving this vaccine. And many have even went as far to say that she died because of taking this uh, mark of the beast. And that's what killed her. Uh, I, I would not go that far. I do not believe this is the mark of the beast. I simply believe that this is a step towards it. Because they, they're, they're going to have to do this incrementally. They're, they can't just like all of a sudden go, okay, we got the mark of the beast. Everyone's got to take this and here we go. It would be too much. People wouldn't accept it and they would freak out. And so what they're going to do is they're going to incrementally march us toward it. And one of the weird things that I think even a non-Christian could agree on is that they're giving us paper vaccination cards, which I thought was so ridiculous. Because why would we do that in 2020 when almost everything is digital. I mean, even my shopper, my grocery card is digital. You know, I got a card for this, a card, a, you know, a, at least a plastic card. Or something. You give us a paper card to keep track of this stuff. It doesn't make any sense. What would make a ton of sense is putting this in a database so that it can be tracked globally. So we can know, hey, I've been vaccinated, right? Because we've seen this whole mask rollout happen. And I believe they've been planning this for a long, long time. And when they rolled out this worldwide, virtually worldwide mass system, basically they're saying you cannot go shopping. You cannot buy. You cannot sell in any of our stores if you do not have your mask on. So you only have to change one letter, change that S into an R, and you, you know, you're, then you can't buy or sell with a mark. It's not too hard to imagine a situation where all of a sudden you, you're going to need digital proof that you have been vaccinated in order to go into a store to buy or sell. It's not much of a leap. And you know what? All the technology exists. So we live in a time where all of this technology is available. It exists. So it's really easy to imagine this scenario. Imagine, you know, almost 2,000 years ago, when this was written by, by John, and he wasn't aware of all of this technology, like how would he know that we would have databases and that we would be tracked by the number of our name? You know, when I was, before I became a Christian, I thought that was an extraordinary thing to even think about as someone in 80 AD on an island. Like, how would you even think? Like, they had, a, they had the concept of, you know, tracking things like they had a census, but how would they know that they could go and track everyone and prevent them from buying and selling based upon some kind of a record that they have? That's a pretty extraordinary thing that scripture talks about. So there she is receiving the vaccine. And, you know, some of the things that do make sense, you know, I mean, it does go in your body, right? So you can see it's going in your body. That is a requirement. That's one similarity. Uh, the, the, again, the whole mask thing is similar to how it prevents you from buying and selling. So that's a little eerie. Um, another aspect is the whole 666 thing, you know, cause it talks about how 
basically this is going to be kind of like a calling card for Satan or the Antichrist, which is really their teammates. So 666 is kind of like this calling card and people have referenced this patent that Microsoft has, which can put a digital token in your body, which then communicates. Basically, it would turn real life into World of Warcraft and you would do tasks in order to gain digital currency. So it's basically like gamifying reality and uh, you would earn money that way, real money. What's the difference from the money we have now? Well, it's just digital numbers in a bank account in a database. So uh, let's start diving into scripture. And I'm going to kind of show where all the problems are in terms of how this cannot quite yet be the um, actual full-fledged Mark of the Beast. I think it's just a precursor. And one thing you have to understand if you're watching this video, the Antichrist, if you don't know who the Antichrist is, the Antichrist is, okay, well, first of all, you need to understand that in Christianity, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the one that we were waiting for, the chosen one, you know, he's the one that came, he was the son of God, and Christians believe that he was, he fulfilled scripture, the one who was predicted to come, and who would sort of have like a great reset effect on civilization, on, on the entire world. And I think most of us could agree that Jesus was at least a human, and then he and that it was a significant impact upon the world. And of course, Christians believe that he is the Messiah. Now, there are groups of people who do not believe he was the Messiah. Muslims and Jews both do not believe he was the Messiah. So there, many of these other religions, these major religions, are waiting on a Messiah figure, particularly Judaism which is waiting for a Messiah. So that's an important thing to understand. Because if you talk to any Orthodox Jew, they will tell you that they are waiting for an, a, a, their Messiah figure because they thought that Jesus was just, um, you know, if you talk to Muslims, for example, they'll say, oh, Jesus, yeah, he existed, but he was just a prophet. Not, he was just a man, a great preacher. You know, just like Isaiah or Jeremiah from the Old Testament. So that is the that's that's a really important thing to understand, because they believe that one day there will be this Antichrist figure that the entire world is going to bow down and worship, except for Christians. And that's why you'll notice oftentimes Christians are kind of in opposition to literally everything else. And I don't know if you notice that, but personally, I see it that way. And let's read scripture because I'm, I, I, I'm at risk of explaining too much in this video. And third, so Revelation chapter 13 is where most of the scripture is relating to the mark of the beast. And it talks about the rise of the Antichrist over this world government that everyone except Christians, everyone except Christians will accept the Antichrist. And it says, it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And for those that don't know, saints are all Christian believers. Saint that's repeated in the King James Bible. Saints are believers. Like the New Orleans saints. Those are believers. To make war with the saints and to overcome them. So he's going to come to earth and make war with the Christians. And we kind of see that already, even in America. And to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So he's going to rule all people of the earth. It sounds like a one world government, right? We hear a lot of talk about a one world government, the United Nations, and all of these globalist organizations that are working to unify and consolidate power under one person. That is the end goal here. Over all kindreds, tongues and nations so everyone when they talk about tongues they're talking about all languages so he's going to rule all over, over all of them that's talking about the global government so this is one problem i this is why i don't really believe that this could be the mark of the beast because we don't have an antichrist figure 
we don't have someone ruling over the entire, I mean, Donald Trump is not ruling over the entire earth. It's just not happening. We have all of these nations that are really not under the yoke of global powers, like, you know, people will point to Iran and North Korea and, and many others. So that's one of the key reasons that I do not believe that. It continues to say that all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. So the book of life is always a reference to a, a list of people who are believers or saints. We'll use that word again. So everyone who is not a Christian will worship the Antichrist as a literal God on earth, which isn't too extraordinary because Christians worship Jesus Christ as God on earth. And it continues to say, oh, uh, written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So that's just talking about uh, the book of life and how uh, if you're not in that book of life, then you're going... If you're in the book of life, you're going to be persecuted by the Antichrist. Five verses later, it talks about how the Antichrist is going to do extraordinary wonders on earth. He's going to, um, you know, and we've seen technology, how it's so amazingly deceptive, right? Like you can't even trust video anymore. You can't, you definitely can't trust audio. They've had, they've been able to fake audio for 20 plus years and they can, you know, they have deep fake technology where they can put anyone's face in a video and it looks like them, you know, and there's little problems with the technology that they're ironing out, but the technology is quite good. And that's why really it's getting to a point where you can't really believe anything you see because the technology is so good. Like we've all seen these outer space movies where they're flying around and they're orbiting earth and it looks real. Like how do you, how do you know that interstellar or gravity, those two movies weren't really shot in outer space. I mean, it looks like pretty convincing, right? It's looks so real, but it's not because Hollywood is so spiritually committed to deceiving people with film. They're so committed to um, turn. They're, they're so committed to just rewriting reality and just taking control of reality. They don't like reality, so they're going to create one that is even better. And that's kind of been the goal. They always want to be able to deceive people through media. So it says basically that it comes, he makes, makes fire come down from heaven. And some have wondered, you know, is that like an alien invasion or something like that? Maybe. And many have speculated about that. Uh, it continues. And of course, these are all events that we haven't seen. So how could this, you know, that's why I don't believe this vaccine could possibly be it. And he says that he deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. So he's, He's deceiving them because the miracles are so convincing. So that's why they believe that he's this godlike figure. He deceives them with sorcery or technology. And he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. It continues, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So this is going to be global persecution of all that do not believe. So basically all Christians. So basically all these Christians are going to be committed. So we don't see Christians being rounded up and, but I, I'm telling you, watch for it. You're going to see people calling out Christians and saying, oh, these Christians are the problem. These religious beliefs are the problem. You know, they're trusting in God. And you're seeing that more and more. You're seeing that kind of rhetoric ramp up. We're like, oh, these, these people went to church and they don't believe in this invisible sky germ. And, you know, they're the kind of problem. These bumpkin fool Christians, they're the real problem. If only they believed in science. So we're hearing that a lot of that kind of rhetoric. So just be vigilant about that. Verse 16. So we're just going to finish, go through verse uh, chapter 13 here. This is the most relevant part. Probably the most famous verse in Revelation, perhaps. 
And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So, you know, this vaccine doesn't really go in your forehead or in your hand. I mean, it kind of goes in your, in your, in your shoulder usually, right? Um, and it continues, that no man may buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Which is interesting because that's very like database specific kind of information. Like the name and the ID or like, especially the ID. Or uh, like the number is usually used as a unique identifier. In most databases, you have a primary auto incrementing integer. That, tr that is a great way to keep track of everything. And, and it looks like a name is an alternate. So maybe in the end times, you would have a name for your, because it's hard to remember a number. So you might have a, some kind of unique name for your, uh, for this mark. And in, the, in verse 18, it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six, which is 666. And that's just like a famous satanic calling card. Anytime people want to glorify Satan, they pull out the 666. And, you know, people are always looking at numer numerology, and they're seeing 666 here and 666 there. And sometimes it's a coincidence, and sometimes it is actually... A reference a satanic reference so again the differences are the you know the world except for christians have not accepted an antichrist figure uh, we don't see humanity united under them we don't see uh world peace we in fact we see tensions kind of ratcheting up we don't see him reigning over a world government and we don't see now if you see this vaccine like moving towards, oh, now we got a digital certificate. Oh, now, guess what? Why don't you just inject this and then you'll be able to scan this on your wrist. And uh, that'll be a much more convenient way than carrying this paper card around. Now, if you start hearing talk like that and they're like, by the way, you're going to have to come back and get more shots because it turned into a more aggressive form of coronavirus. And they're just going to keep pushing this agenda more and more. And you've already seen it. They're already talking about how they're going to have to, oh, you know, this new strain came out and boy, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and we're going to have to uh, come up with a better system than this because it's just not working and we'll just keep pushing more and more. Incrementally, step by step, until they get to this point where it is a mark of the B system. Um, now, personally, I've mentioned in previous videos, I would really rather catch coronavirus itself than take this vaccine just simply because of the transhumanistic aspects of the vaccine that's my personal opinion uh I, th I feel like my odds would be better if i just caught it and recovered from it in a natural way instead of tampering with the code of my dna which has god knows what side effects so in summary i do not believe that this vaccine is the mark of the beast. I believe it is a baby step towards it, and it will be much crazier. The world will be way crazier than what you see right now. You think this is bad is going to get way crazier. And I will say, I don't know if we're in the last days, but it sure as hell will be a lot like this, but crazier. I mean, the persecution will be much worse than what you're seeing right now. So that's just something to think about. I hope that clarifies my stance on the whole mark of the beast, whether this vaccine represents it or not. Um, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to ask some questions. And I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty responsive, and I'll get back to you. Uh, if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe, and I'll continue to cover this whole epic uh situation with tiffany dover vaccinations and all the rest of it is all very interesting to me and it seems like people are enjoying the content so and i like sitting up in this tree man what do you think nice and cozy up here i don't know kind of like it nice little background anyway merry christmas and i'll see you guys next time